Welcome to Grand Prix 2 everybody. This will be a long video I'm afraid. But I'm amazed and may oh, oh That's a real smile. Have to be gentle with the throttle. And I saved a slide, like there's no force feedback. This is magic. Actually a little bit of feel. It's not easy. 60E didn't die! I didn't die! Having a level of not all the feel. <laughs> Oh, 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 almost got it. Again, again, he saves it. Wheel spin. Oh, look at that. The amount of not dying is surprising. Nippy Niels needs a break. This, come on, man. How? How does it do that? If you have a screenshot of this, it could just as well be of a random real race car. So hi, welcome to Grand Prix 2, a game by Geoff Cremant, 1996. Geoff Cremant invented sim racing in very early 80s with refs that came out on a BBC Micro, which was a really old style computer, but it was as realistic as it could be back in the day. Then Formula 1 Grand Prix came out in 91 for the Amiga and I think 92 for the PC, which is also a Formula 1 game, but not officially licensed. This is officially licensed, so we have all the teams and, and stuff and the photos here. A few things are stand out. It's 640 by 480, which sounds like, oh, that's really low res. No, <laughs> in 1996, that was mind blowing. Wow, look at those many pixels, it was amazing. And each page in the menu has its own picture. We'll, we'll run through the menus a little bit, but they were so nice that there is an option in the menu to set a delay time. So if you want to goggle, ogle, ogle, goggle, well, whatever, for one second, now the images stay for a little bit. <laughs> Very nice. So I'm just going through this manager a little bit and I do want to spend some time with that because it's just incredibly comprehensive. We have a frame rate limit of 25.6. I think they never imagined it to go any fa faster and there were no PCs imaginable back then that would be able to run it faster. Nowadays, that is very difficult to look at. You can run it at 320 by 200 if you had a normal PC and you still had to lower the details even if you had like a fast 486. If you want to run the textures, which is you think common nowadays, but back then texture mapping without 3D acceleration was pretty hard on CPU mainly. So if you want to texture map the mirrors and texture map all, all the things here and the smoke was a nice way to have your frame rate. So all these settings uh, allowed you to tweak it to get a reasonable frame rate. The big problem, and I do have to mention this with uh, all the games by Geoff Cremant, the frame rate, it will, it doesn't lower the frame rate if your PC cannot keep up. So what you get, if you go 25.6 frames per second and your hardware wasn't up to it, you would run in slow motion. Time would run slower. So that's a, a weird design choice that kept in uh, being in all the Geoff Cremant games as far as I know. And that's that was a weird choice of, of programming that I think was already out of date in 1996, but definitely with Grand Prix 3 and 4 that was unacceptable. Here maybe it's not too bad because just how old this game is and, and the way it was still sort of an evolution of the first Formula 1 Grand Prix, I think. But lots of detail, and I just like the way it is presented with all these boxes. You can use the mouse, if you had a mouse back then, uh, which became a bit, you know, more normal. Windows 95 was more or less out now. So thank you, uh, everybody. Everybody, thank you. You can, you know, do housekeeping because you have limited hard drive space. You can delete some files. You can make printouts of results. I think it's just the way this is presented. Do a test print, see if it works. You can do a bit of sound setup. Track records, being an officially licensed game. Oh, nice picture as well. This is just nice to have. Like, oh, what are the track records on all these tracks? Well, Ayrton Senna did it at Interlagos. What about Great Britain? Damon Hill, obviously. I haven't looked at this in too great detail, but you can restore uh, the originals. But I guess if I do a lap record in qualifying and official race in this game, I will appear here, but I can always restore the original ones. That's nice. 
such a nice attention to detail link up you could do a <laughs> nice picture direct connection even with a modem, modem link i've never done any of that so i have no idea if that worked well but i just like the way it's all presented here and advanced options and you can save the game state which i think all the menu options get saved it's i still think I, I this menu system is still not just from a nostalgia perspective but actually very intuitive and has all the options control method here you can set your your controls and this is a good page to spend a little bit of time because uh, how do you get this working on a modern pc well it's dosbox and hence community edition there are various versions of dosbox in order to make the wheel and pedals work well dosbox and hence community edition i think supports two controllers which is not enough so i had to use uh, virtu vjoy uh, in combination with universal joystick remapper to make a virtual joystick that combines my wheel simucube uh, with some buttons and some axis and then a lot of messing about later uh, it, it all worked it's also one of the first game to do control driven calibration because before that they would just tell you to move your joystick to all four corners and with control driven calibration which sounds so logical right now but it was the first game to do it it just asks you okay steer left steer right rather than move whatever joystick left or right you will see some non-simulator things there is speed sensitive steering and also a little bit of a low sensitivity zone with the dosbox enhanced edition and i will have things in the description the settings i, I adjusted uh, there is enough resolution in the pedals and the steering wheel about 500 steps that's more than fine but the car, the physics, they do feel very twitchy at high speed. So I do use uh, some speed sensitivity as well because there is no force feedback. You know, you just you tend to steer a bit more than you want with no load on the steering wheel. I just have a bit of centering spring. So for me, this works. And I think you're entitled to do that because I don't think the physics engine is complete enough. The tires are complicated enough. I don't know if there's slip angle and stuff. A tiny bit of low sensitivity zone. This is more than enough to get you around the hairpins, 15, deg 15 degrees at Monaco. And do, do use some uh, speed sensitive steering because like up the hill towards the fast left-hander at uh, Hungaro ring, ooh, it's just very hard to, to control. Now, I still don't need a lot of luck like in the tunnel, it's only this much. So this sort of works well for me and makes it nice and controllable. Do make sure when you calibrate here, that it sees the entire axis because I've also had like a throttle pedal only registering the first half, which makes it very sensitive. So it does take some tweaking with VJoy, maybe uh, joystick remapping, that sort of stuff. Or if you have one ecosystem, it should be probably be fine. Uh, I don't have my clutch mapped. I didn't attempt it. I don't know if probably still have an ax axis left, but I'm just having auto clutch. So when I keep my gear shift pedal pulled, then the clutch is engaged, so I can still rev the engine. So yeah, there's an elaborate menu there. You can choose your driver team, change all the names, uh, export the names, save the driver names, so you can download, or a friend can make funny names. Damon Hillbilly, Superjaw, Cooled Heart, whatever. You can make fun of, of the names and, and share that file with somebody. There is a whole topic I won't talk about in this video. There's a lot of like uh, community mods and, and things done. Telemetry viewers for Windows even that still work. Some amazing guys are involved with not just Formula 1 Grand Prix, but also Grand Prix 2, keeping it alive until uh, probably today. But I want to focus on the game as it was out in 96 without going into all the community-made updates. If you do a long race, you can save the race and, and reload it and finish it. Uh, you can load replays. Oh, not a nice picture. And this is just like a nice, like, what do you want to filter for? Sure, filter for track, maybe. Uh, load files. There's not, not a lot here. Uh, load ask access your drives it's just really a nicely presented this must have taken some time and logic to to make this the drive menu we can do a quick race or practice a non-championship uh, drive options as well where we have how long do you want the race to last do you want rookie or ace position this also sets the uh, driving age you can select of course with ace uh, there's no like invulnerability hard word for me to say and with rookie you can enable driving aids like automatic braking the ideal line stuff like that another big feature and i'm going on about this just because it's such an amazing game failures this was not a thing in racing i don't think like of course in uh indy car racing uh, from from dave kammer and indy 500 you could blow the engine and stuff like that and you could also have certain failures but 
the detail of the issues and this was a real thing in in formula one until very recently cars broke down a lot and randomly and you can enable all these random failures to occur which is really something is annoying when it ruins your race you can also access the car setups menu from here the car setup is quite detailed uh, there are wing settings which definitely make a difference uh, the gear ratios you can set here you can have separate setups for, for qualifying and uh and racing is just you know oh yeah how often have you had with like a modern like say ams r factor you forget to save your re in install the setup for race and you have no fuel and the current setup is for this and separate fa set this is just nice and you can view and copy from somewhere else and oh the detail is is really nice advanced though is where things get really scary look at the options here we have uh, the first thing, sim, I think, with right height sensitive arrow. I am not sure. I don't have access to the source code, but you can set the right heights and the plank will wear out. Uh, it was the first year, of course, where they had like a wooden plank on the bottom of the cars. It will wear out. And uh, at some point in this game, when it's completely worn, the, the floor drags a lot and you lose a lot of speed. I don't know if that's fully realistic. Also not sure if you get like disqualified if it wears too much. But right heights, heights are a thing for the first time, I think, in a, in, a, in a sim. You could actually bottom out. You hear it too. We'll get to the sounds. So the things you can control, even the packers, reducing the suspension travel, just to make it possible to run the car lower to the ground. Really nice. Anti-roll bars, which actually make a difference. Slow and fast damping. That hasn't been a thing in, in certain games until way later. So it's really, really, really impressive. And... I have yet to test everything, but it does all seem to make some sense and work quite, quite well. Super, super impressive. I'm currently being blown away by a game from 1996. Running at 25.6 frames per second. Sadly, it won't go any faster. And that is a bit hard on the eyes, but look at it, we're at Monaco. And it is a nicer version of Monaco than I've seen until maybe only the recent versions of Codemasters Formula 1. I'm feeding in the throttle. Here the tire scrub. Have to be gentle with the throttle. And I saved a slide. Like, there's no force feedback. This is magic. There's actually a little bit of feel. It's not easy. And you have to be easy on the throttle, because otherwise... Speechless. It does that sometimes in order to minimize the lag in DOS box. If the sound is really laggy and that turns out to be very, very important. Oh, you gotta be careful if you downshift. While braking too hard, you can easily spin and lock the rears, I think. Whatever happens physically. Oh, running wide. So the video I uploaded a little earlier was with a lot of sound lag and you feel it. And now I feel a lot more connected because there is no force feedback. So you need the graphics and the sound to guide you. And it felt like there was a couple tens of lag in the... Uh, in the sound, now there's just a couple tens lag in my brain trying to talk and drive. Really nice. Oh, oh, that's not nice. Oh. So it, it runs better with the connection with the sound and I, I just had a go at Monaco and I'm surprised the track is really good. No weird bump in the tunnel like in older Codemasters titles. I haven't tried the new versions, but it's just, yeah, it looks like Monaco and 
I'm surprised I'm getting a little bit of a feel for the car without four seat back, just a bit of centering spring, that's all. Have to be careful, not just on the throttle, but also on the brakes. And it's so cool that my quicker laps, which are more than quick enough to beat the AI easily, but not quite like world record hot lapping laps. But I'm reasonable at the game now. But my quicker laps, looking at the telemetry, which is included, we will get to that. You see those brake traces are nice sawtooth shape. That's how you drive a Formula 1 car. Well, single seater, downforce, any downforce car. So my quicker laps, the telemetry is really nice and... Sorry I forget driving, I'm too much things going on. So telemetry, I was at 16. Didn't die! I didn't die! <coughs> Com okay, composure. <laughs> Jeez. I had no clue back in the day what telemetry was. But of course nowadays I pretend to know a bit about that. And it's so nice to have that included in the game. Compare laps, get telemetry from the replays you might get from a friend. And look at those throttle and brake traces and you find that I'm careful on the throttle. I'm sawtooth shaped on the brakes. There is suspension travel in here. How do they do suspension travel? It's 1996. People had a 486. Maybe a Pentium if you had a bit of money. And then you look at the suspension wobble movement over a lap. And if you zoom out a little bit, you make a screenshot, you would not be able to tell if it's from a real car, a random racing car, or a DOS game from 1996 that ran with 8 megabytes of RAM. So that is so cool, but that having a level of... Not all the feel. <laughs> And that, right at the car with a bit of extra throttle, really, really blown away. So it is high time to look at this game with three webcams. And if I'm impressed with it now, yes, yeah, so ahead of its time in 96, a bit, a, a, maybe a bit too much actually, because what you are seeing now is the absolute maximum frame rate it can achieve, 25.6, yes at the maximum resolution 640 by 480 but yeah nah no way on any planet you could run it in this frame rate at this detail setting back in 96 we had a 486 and this was this weird time where for the longest time if you're not old PC games ran at a resolution of 320 by 200 pixels Oh, oh, <laughs> that was all we get. And then in 94 and 95, some games gave you the option running 640 by 480. Oh, bit of a glitch there. But yeah, nah. The hardware to actually run at those frame rates, there was no 3D acceleration. You couldn't run texture mapped games at 640 by 480 in 1996 you probably need like a 500 megahertz Pentium 3 to run this which check 1996 maybe a Pentium 100 120 was available I don't know you have to be super rich to have that so the graphics and the frame rate you see would never be possible in 96 so it was ahead of its time uh, oh. ahead of its time Sadly, on the hardware front, and now I am playing it with an accurate wheel and a load cell pedal. And remember the sawtooth brake shapes. You try to do that with a Thrustmaster T2. I I can't, but with a nice load cell pedal, it's actually possible. And the accuracy of a steering wheel like this, even though there's no forcey back, it's really smooth and precise. Much better than a Thrustmaster wheel from the era. So this would be like unimaginable to run this well and control this smoothly 
but now, 20 million years after the fact, even though it's hard to get used to that super low frame rate. Oh, oh, oh almost got it. Almost got it. I'm just surprised because when I first started this at the Hungaro Ring, which I was not bad at back in the day, that's why I picked that track. I had no feel, but now with the less input lag, uh, I mean less sound lag, more practice, I'm starting to not always die when the car steps out, but you have to be really careful, really precise. But I didn't expect that I would put the blame on myself. And instead of the car physics or the game when I make a mistake. But so far I think I'm getting to the point where I'm to blame. Oh, I'm to blame, <laughs> definitely. And not the game, and that's, that's what's blowing my mind right now. The sound is really nice. I used to think, oh, in, my mem oh, in my memory, the sound was pretty bad, but there's actually a difference of throttle and on throttle sound, which you're thinking, Niels, of course there is. This is 1996. You needed to buy a separate sound card for your PC to get digital sound at all. And there are various types of skit sound. There's like a, a scrubbing that gets worse the more you approach death. And there's that big skid sound. The under tray when it bottoms out, you see it on the display on the display right next to the wheel. If the uh, plank hits the ground, you, you can hear that as well. Stereo curbstone sounds. So there's no wind sound or tire rolling noise. So it sounds a little bland there, but I think the sound is really pretty good. And again, the little artifacts you sometimes hear are my quest to get minimum sound latency in DOSBox. Getting it all to work is a little bit of a challenge. Regular DOSBox runs way too fast. Maybe it's fixed, but I still think it runs too fast. Typically my favorite is DOSBox X, but that runs it too slow. Like some timing issue. The performance is alright. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Uh, just like uh, Ted Mead uh, figured out, you should watch Ted Mead on YouTube, he does full races in games like this. That DOSBox Enhanced Community Edition works a bit better, the timing seems give or take one or two seconds a lap accurate. And DOSBox Enhanced Community Edition also allows you to set the joystick support, giving you a bit more resolution. I have about 500 steps of steering, which is more than enough. It's still fairly tricky uh, to run because it is, like I said, you need like a 500 megahertz Pentium 3 for this to run at the settings we have now. I'm just guessing that, by the way, I don't know exactly what PC you would have needed, but definitely something that was unavailable or unaffordable back then. So even DOSBox gets a bit of a workout. I'm running maximum cycles and that seems to go okay. But it's a Ryzen uh, again, that's the same and a safe. A ri modern Ryzen CPU, you know, that's pretty quick. So even to this day, it emulated of course, it takes a bit of grunt to simulate uh, emulate DOS quick enough for this game. Oh. And then we're not there because in DOSBox it only sees, I believe, two controllers. So I'm using a combination of V-Joy and Universal Joystick Remapper to map certain functions of my input devices on a virtual joystick. And then with some messing about I could get it to actually work. Oh, clutch doesn't do anything, Niels. So with a bit of messing about, I got that to work. Also with separate throttle and brake axis. Oh, that's bad. Oh, 
that's no fuel. Well, that shuts me up. So it took a bit of work to get working. No wheel spin. Delicate throttle control. That's that, yeah. I mean, a lot of time in there. Maybe I'll do more hot lapping, but. Whew. Notice few logged data. Well, we select the amazing lab. We add it to the foreground and we graph the lab. This is something I really did not understand the slightest when I was 16. I still barely do, but now I pretend to do that, and you all believe me. So telemetry of the lab and not just like, oh yeah, this is, no, you can zoom the frig in. We like that. You see the ref, you see the speed. And uh, what about the throttle brake steer stuff? Look at that, you know, sawtooth-ish. I'm braking a bit too hard. <laughs> for turn one, gradually on the throttle. Look at that brake trace for up the hill. Like, boom, perfectly trail braking into that turn. Gradual throttle, oh, oh, wobbly wobbly. Here over the hump, there isn't really that big a hump. Onto the next braking zone for the tight right hander. Clipping a little bit with the braking, but still a nice sawtooth shape. Easy on the throttle there. And this is the one into the tunnel. Oh, gradual, you see the throttles, never 100%. If you do that, you will die. Increasing the throttle in the tunnel. Exiting. Oh, braking hard. Again, like a sort of a sawtooth shape. Releasing the brake a bit too abruptly. Dab of brakes before the quick left-hander. Ah, the, the, this telemetry with the gradual throttle and the brake traces, you know, isn't dissimilar to what you would do in real life to some extent and what you do in, in good sims. So look at suspension travel. I have to zoom out a bit for that. So here we see uh, the travel of the suspension. It, it has some wobbliness in it, like it's not super... It's got some noise in there, so the tracks are sort of bumpy in, in a weird way. And you would expect the ride heights to be more bumpy than this, because the tires are, are bouncing and the suspension is less bouncy. So maybe we do the ride heights. Look at that! That is just... It boggles the mind. Let's zoom in on the y-axis a little bit. This! Come on, man! How? How does it do that? Like, we're bottoming out on the braking here for turn one. But you see the, the ride heights are, are, are wobbly. They're as if the track has some detail, some bumpiness. If you see the telemetry of like a perfectly smooth R-factor track and you look at the telemetry there, this is no, nothing like this. This is amazing. So we bottom out a little bit. You get the traces, the bumps. This, this could just, if you have a screenshot of this, it could just as well be of a random real race car. You know, the noisiness, the bumpiness. Insane. It's really, really, really impressive. Like, it, it doesn't, it shouldn't be possible <laughs> to do that. So here are the wheel speeds. Depending on which way you go, I think this is the end of the uphill after turn one. I turn left, so the left side spins a bit slower. Maybe because I'm braking, I'm probably also braking. So there's a bit of inside wheel, it's not locked or it's from doing a tighter radius. 
Ah, it's really nice. Oh, a bit of a lock up here in the front. Ooh, ever so slightly on the left front. At breaking into the tunnel wasn't great. You see, I almost lock uh, the left front again. It's, that's the one that tends to lock up. That detail, man, that, that is included in the game in an easy to use viewer and you can compare against other laps and if you get a replay from a friend you can analyze the data which in 1996 is a good chance you had no idea what it was just like me or maybe you were smarter and older and, and more advanced but seeing it now where i've become a grown man who's managed to fool people into believing i understand this stuff it it really is mind blowing and i keep repeating myself and i don't care this is just really really impressive but it's backed up by driving that's hard to get used to but then at some point it's actually very you know relatively very good without forcing back still feeling a distant connection with with the car amazed let's see if that's true if we lower the front and increase the rear let's see what that does to the handling there we go, new setup. Oh, that was, yeah. Oh, oh, I, uh. I think it's more oversteery. Oh yes, wow. I'm getting more convinced it might not be placebo. This is probably a more hopes theory. Or I'm just getting worse, actually. Hmm. Oh yes. Let's do one reasonable lap with this and then compare the data. Maybe this lap? Oh, yeah, saved it. Nice. Almost dead. Much, much slower. Let's look at that, that lap, compare it to the better lap. So we have the 18 now, and now we can load the worst lap with the different anti-roll bars. So we move it to the background, and then we graph the laps so here i'm zoomed in on braking and turn one with the soft anti-roll bar is the continuous line and the stiff anti-roll bar is the dotted line so with the stiff anti-roll bar you can see the the, re the right rear is sort of almost the same but the difference between left and right you would expect to be smaller with a stiffer rear anti-roll bar and it is because this dotted line is the one with the stiffer rear anti-roll bar from 100 to 300 and we are a couple millimeters uh, closer together the, the suspension travels so the anti-roll bar is definitely stiffer because it's closer together you see it here as well so that's sort of mind-boggling that yeah not only can you tweak an anti-roll bar but it actually does something physically to some physics somewhere and we saw the handling as well it was much trickier to avoid oversteer so even that sort of as expected really really cool and on the front we did the, the opposite so the dotted line should now be further apart because the suspension setup uh, is, is softer 
on the other one because we softened the front and we stiffened the rear so at the front we expect the dotted lines to be further apart than the continuous lines look that's quite significant now of course in an r factor 2 set the corsa ams era you expect no less but to have this detail in a game from 1996 with an integrated viewer no need for shady MoTeC plugins and learning that software. It's all here. You can compare your labs. It's really nice. So I'm breaking earlier because I'm more afraid with that setup. <laughs> I'm also not peeking. The traces seem uh, pretty good. Break traces, that is. Yeah, I think I'll calibrate a slightly higher force because I'm clipping a little bit too easily. You do want the delicate touch of the brakes as well. But this is just, you know, I could look at this for ages, just being so impressed with what this game managed to do back then. Let me make some mistakes so I can maybe bring across that feel I'm talking about. Let's see, braking hard into this left-hander. Full throttle there, mid corner. You, it's very easy to to get that to happen. Braking as well. Braking a little bit too hard into the turns. It's very easy to spin. Full throttle here. I'm doing this all on purpose so that you see. You know, my gradual application of throttle and my caution of trail braking isn't just acting like a racing sort of driver knowing a little bit about the, the driving technique. It, it's actually required. Oh, oh, so sorry. <laughs> so I'm not acting that. I'm doing that because you see, if I don't do it, I die. Let's see what happens here if I'm clumsy. See? You see how easy it is to spin? And the fact that I'm not doing that, if I do my best, it doesn't happen too often, means that there must be a degree of feel. And that's why I'm having so much fun. So now I've made some uh, more changes. I reduced the front wing a little bit and also the rear anti roll bar. So you would expect that to be some mechanical and aerodynamic understeer, which the car could definitely use. Oh, look at that line. A more precise and less edgy, less, less twitchy. But that's really nice that these setup changes make all the sense in the world it's much easier to go on the throttle now in uh, the slow turns can go so much faster but it's pretty hard so I think it's about time to 
see it in a bit more of a like 2022 perspective. <coughs> After this old man nearly collapses. So while I am really impressed and I have so much fun and I'm so surprised at how far ahead of its time the game is. It is of course, I think I did the math now, 26 years old and computer hardware and software has come pretty far in all uh, those years. So what are some of the downsides now that I've really tried to put in like 5 hours today? Oh boy, hot lapping Monaco, changing the setup. Well, we talked about all the good stuff, let's focus on the not so good stuff. It is still that window, even though of course there's no force feedback and there's only a low frame rate, but the difference between understeering and spinning is very very small. You saw I could catch a few things, but it is so easy to, to spin still. Now it would be interesting to see if the car setup changes make an actual difference there. I've, I'm not sure, maybe. And here, oh, see when I, oh. Whenever you get a curb stone, the bouncing of the car seems like it is slow motion. I'll try to uh, take this one. Oh, I, I missed it. <laughs> The frame rate as well is really low. Impossible to achieve back in the day, but now it is very hard to get a feel of speed with such a. It's a low frame rate, and I'm also not sure. Maybe it is DOSBox, maybe it is my brain. Just it. It's not even a consistent frame time. I don't think, but I don't know. It's just too low to to come across smooth. And a few times, oh, when I've been sort of on a really hot lap, it's very easy to be surprised by a sudden spin. It is really, really, really delicate. I'm surprised it's not impossible, but it's also really fine margins. Oh, oh see, that's, I sort of threw it wildly and it got oversteered that's acceptable so a lot of the time when it kills you it's acceptable because i was an idiot but here let's take the curb see how long and you don't get any power when you're in the air so i think the curbs and when you get launched that slow motion is a definite drawback And just that window of, of, of saving the car is tiny. Ah, my first tank slapper. We are taking some liberty with what we can say, of course. I do not know what is actually in this physical engine, how it is modeled, what is realistic and what is obviously maybe fudged, because let's face it, Having to run on a 486, there will be some limitations to the physics engine. I wonder if it uses floating point, if it's basically an integer based engine, which would run like whole number calculations. They are fairly quick on a 486 maybe, but the floating point, like the really accurate sine, cosine, like numbers with multiple digits of behind the, the dot basically. That wasn't so good on a 486, that only became reasonably good in a, with a Pentium. And this being able, in low detail, low res, to run on a 486, I wonder if it has like floating point ultra physics. I think it's just... Until Grand Prix Legends came, it's, I think it's still a really like a big evolution of Formula 1 Grand Prix physics. But I'm really not sure, I'm really just speculating, I don't know. Summary time. How about that? Blown away by just having some level of feel at times and that delicate application of throttle. Look at the telemetry, just how realistic-ish it is, just how you have to behave in order to be pretty quick. 
but that line is really fine and it is still easy to get a bit frustrated trying to push because you need 190 percent awareness and two double espressos to pull that off it's just that thing in sim racing where it's been always been so hard to control cars over the limit there is a eeny little bit of space there but without forcing back with just 25 frames per second which also seems stuttery it is very difficult but it's a milestone of a game it's really impressive i really had a huge smile on my face and amazing to get this running so well so far ahead of its time so well polished F a finished game right at release day finished game amazing so very impressive I had so much fun i think i will do more this week but for now this will be sort of my messy uh review of, of grand prix 2 by micropros and i probably forgot something and i might edit it in or edit it not in or out or i don't know what i'm gonna do yet a shower is probably uh, a good idea thanks for watching bye bye